hello welcome to today's video so I have been seeing a book tag go around booktube recently that is a do I have that other book tag and last year I remember binge watching the do I have that book tag which is just like 20 questions maybe? I don't remember exactly how many. So many questions and you have to figure out if you have a book that matches the question. I love that. So with this one going around now, I haven't really seen any videos about, about it. Um, I watched one but it was just background noise and I wasn't paying attention to the questions. And I was like, let's go ahead and do that book tag before I binge watch it and then can just find the books ahead of time. So that's what we're doing today. We're ignoring this. Eventually this will be fixed. Quarantine life. We're ignoring the fact that I have on a tank top that has my gamer tag and a bunch of potatoes on it. Just don't question my clothing decisions or my hair today. <laughs> Anyway, let's start. This has got 20 questions. I did look that up and I just copy pasted all 20 questions, put them into a little app for me so I can read them off of my phone. Um, and it's supposed to be timed, but I'm old. I'm not going to be able to beat anybody's time. I'm going to move slow as hell and I'm probably going to cut this video down so it's not like two hours long of me trying to find these books. So. Please note it's supposed to be timed. I just want to see if I have all these books and I'm not moving fast so I'm not going to time myself. Just assume it took like at least an hour. Alright, let's go. The first question is, do you have a book with a fox on the cover or is part of the plot? <laughs> I don't think I've ever read a book in my entire life about a fox. I can think of like the fox and the hound but that's I saw the movie not read the book. Am I really gonna be stumped on the first one? <laughs> Is Mercy Thompson a fox shifter? No, she's a coyote shifter. Fox, fox, fox. Let me check the other shelves. Wait, what about this? This has a kitsune in it. That's like a half fox, half human. That counts, right? Like, that counts, right? This is the closest I'm going to get is a kitsune. Well, we're off to a fantastic start. Uh, do you have a book published the year you were born or within a three year radius? I actually do because there was a really famous book published a year after I was born. The Handmaid's Tale was published in 1985 and I was born in 1984, so there you go. Next, do you have a book with music as a weapon or magic? Yes, one of my favorite books. Actually, the sequel to one of my favorite books has music as a weapon. actually grabbed two books because this one doesn't have a cover. This is The Wishung of Shannara and the main characters are the children of a guy who used a lot of elven magic and they were born with a birth defect I guess is how they describe it. Um, but the magic that his father used basically, or that their father used, genetically altered them so they can create, or one of them can change reality, 
by singing and the other one can create illusions by singing and that happens in this book and then in the uh the scions of shannara as well which is the sequel to this one so magic as song next is do you have a series with mismatched covers i mean the books that i just held up have mismatched covers but we'll just go with that series because that series is like 30 books long and all of my covers are way different editions let's just grab some of the paperbacks that i've got right here but as you can see they're all like completely different editions just because they were published over I don't know, like 30 years? Do you have a book with a shapeshifter? We just talked about the Mercy Thomas book. It might be a coyote shifter, but she's still a damn shapeshifter. Um, do you have a book signed by the author? I do. And this one's kind of sad. So this poor book went through a flood and it's kind of destroyed, but... It is signed by Robert Jordan, and uh, Robert Jordan has passed away, so I'm not going to throw away this book, even if it is very damaged because of water damage. Uh, Do you have a book, this is number seven, do you have a book with a mostly red cover? I mean... Most of these are really red. I don't know. Let, let's go pull something from the other shelf. How about Silverthorn by Raymond E. Feist? This is, I would say, mostly red. What do you guys think? Mostly red? Yeah. Um, do you have a book that has between 287 and 306 pages? Really? Sure, probably, somewhere. Uh... <laughs> All these look so long. <laughs> it has exactly 306 pages. I guess not if you count the epilogue, but the epilogue's not, I guess 308 if you count the epilogue, which still counts. Wait, no, that goes over. Okay, we'll find a different one. We'll, we'll count one without the epilogue. What are you at? 346. Oh, you look short. <laughs> Two hundred and eighty-seven pages. I don't know if I zoomed in enough on that. There you go. That was Strange Candy by Laurel K. Hamilton. So exactly two hundred eighty-seven. So we had one on both ends, even though the other one, if you counted the epilogue, it didn't count. Whatever. You get it. You get it. Do you a book where the main character wear glasses? It should be, do you have a book where the main character wears glasses? Um, I feel like everybody's going to pick Harry Potter for this, so I'm not going to pick Harry Potter, and I'm going to go back to this, uh, Architraz series right here. Yeah, that one has one. So, this is a middle grade series by Brandon Sanderson called Architraz vs. the Evil Librarians. And the magic system in this book involves spectacles. So, in order to use magic, the main character has to put glasses on. Do you have a book with a 
title that has the same number of letters as your first name. My first name is Ari. It is spelled A-Y-R-E, so four letters. Do I have a book with a four letter title? There can't be a lot of books out there with four letters. Can there? Anna K has five. Th that's close, right? I found one. Zombie. This is pretty awful, though. I like the twist of this first book, and it's hard to describe what it's about without giving away the twist, so bear with me on this, is the main character, who goes by B, is a zombie. And they're, like, trapped in the dead, brainless zombie aesthetic, <laughs> but remembers being human and it's kind of like fighting the brainless zombie nature with actually not wanting to kill people and eat their brains. So it's short. I don't think anybody's ever heard of this. If you, it's got a great twist. So maybe if you could get a hold of this for cheap, read the first one, but don't continue with the series. The rest of the series isn't worth it, but the twist of this book gave me life. So, there was a lot of talking about a book. I only talked about that one because I literally don't think anybody's ever heard of it. Um, let's see. Main character were classics, title list, same letters, your first name is name. Okay, do you have a book where there is a cybercrime or technology as an important plot point? I don't read a whole lot of sci-fi. Actually, I take that back. I don't own a whole lot of sci-fi. Oh, oh. Ready Player One counts, right? I mean, that's all technology and cybercrime. There you go. Ready Player One. Do you have a book written in another language? Yes. I have a copy of The Great Gatsby in Korean and English. And I read it earlier this year, which is why I instantly knew that. So. One side of the page is in Korean, the other side is in English. It's the exact same text on both sides. Number 13, do you have a book written by an Asian author? Yeah, I've got all three of these books right here are for Asian readathon. So they're all written by Asian authors. Uh, Seven Deadly Shadows, The Night Tiger, and Anna Kay. That was cheating, but <laughs> I already had them there because I'm reading them for Asian, Her Asian Heritage Month. Um, do you have a book with a moon on the cover? Does Bear and the Nightingale have a moon on the cover? No. Uh, oh, I bet Crescent City has a moon on the cover. It does! Do you have an illustrated children's book? I do. I have A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood by Fred Rogers, which is all of the poetry behind the songs in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and it's illustrated all throughout. Very pretty. Let's see, do you have a collection of myths or fairy tales? I don't think so. Does the Necronomicon count? <laughs> I don't know that this is counts. I don't know that this counts, so I'm gonna look for something else. 
but I want the Necronomicon to count because it is a collection of myths. <laughs> okay, I found two on the other shelves. I've got uh, American Indian Stories by Zitkala Sa, which has a bunch of Indian folklore in it, and uh, The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, which is just a bunch of tales told by people. It's a tale about tales being told by people. One of those has to count. Um, do you have a fantasy or sci-fi that has an alliance between different races? I mean, like literally every fantasy ever has an alliance between different races, right? Let's do Robert Jordan's uh, the Wheel of Time series has a race called the Ogier, um, and they're not human, but they are in an alliance with humans, so there you go. Do you have a book with a narrow front cover? A paperback where the front cover is trimmed slightly shorter, narrower than the rest of the pages. Is it like a smut cover? Don't like all smutty books have these? Oh yeah, this one does. It's the smut tab where the front cover is just a little short and you pull it back and you get the smut. <laughs> Perfect. Do you have a book that includes the first chapter of a sequel? I mean, probably, but where is Pirate Stopper? Oh no, it says like, Heart Stopper Volume 2 would continue, read more online. So no. Um. What about The Way of Kings? Probably not. Oh, it just has an epilogue. Mm, maybe the Cruel Prince? Ah, yes! Turn the page for a sneak preview of the Wicked King. Found it. Uh... Last question. Do you have a book with a broken spine? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I don't actually care about my spines. There's... Ooh, I got a really broken one right here that I see. This is my first copy of The Eye of the World, and it's broken. I mean, it's like, really really damaged. I bought this when I was a teenager. There's pages missing. This isn't actually the one I read anymore. I just keep it because it's the first one that I owned. I have a much nicer floppy copy <laughs> to read. Uh, but yeah, definitely has a broken spine. I have a billion more. This was just like easiest eye level because um, I know I pulled a ton from this series. And then there's a bonus question. Do you have a book that covers three or more prompts? And I literally think this one does. This, well, I guess it doesn't because this one isn't the signed one. But it, I, it covers mismatch covers because I've got hardbacks, paperbacks. So it covers mismatch covers, the alliance between different races and the broken spine. So, and it has a moon on the cover. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> that one covers like four. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this book tag down in the comments. I had fun digging out books from my bookshelves. There was only a handful of them I struggled with, so that that's kind of nice. Uh, not not too shabby. Let me know down in the comments if you're gonna do this book tag too. Link your video. I would love to watch it. 
uh, I love this this book tag or this kind of book tag and I am now going to go put all of these books back on my shelves and I will see you Tuesday for the 1940s reading wrap-up.